It's been reported that debit cards amount for 67% of car payments and for decades people have been warned about the dangers of using credit cards and how it puts you in debt but what you should really be doing as I am right now is cutting up your debit card and tossing it out the window. Oh shit. That was my credit card. Just kidding. My credit card is made of metal and it can't be cut. But with all jokes aside, there are many reasons as to why you should not be using your debit card and how you can benefit from using a credit card instead. Of course, in a responsible way that is. Later in this video, I will tell you what credit cards and debit card I use day to day and how you can use them efficiently. Let's dive right in. Imagine you're going about your peaceful day and suddenly you get an alert for fraudulent activity on your debit card. You then quickly log into your bank account and to realize someone has spent $500 with your debit card. But then being a smart person you are, you call the bank right away and realize you still owe $50 of that $500 fraudulent transaction. Why? Because debit cards are protected by the Electronic Funds Transfer Act which states that if you report a fraudulent activity of a lost or stolen debit card within 48 hours, you are liable for a maximum of $50. However, if you're so busy or lazy and report it after 48 hours but within 60 days of activity, then you're now liable for up to $500. So pretty much the possibility of getting your money returned to you depends on how quickly you act and report to your bank. Bank. If we take this to an extreme case and say you don't report for 60 days for some odd reason, well now you're liable for fraudulent charges regardless of how much it may be. You may think that these type of situations are rare but a research suggests that 86% of consumers were a victim of some sort of credit or debit card fraud in 2022. 86%. You might as well be included because that's an unreal high number of people. But if you're smart and have been following my channel then you might have been educated to know that if fraudulent activity happens on a credit card, no matter the time frame and the amount of money, you are only liable for up to $50. That's it. This is thanks to the Fair Credit Billing Act. A real case scenario that happened with me was when my card information was leaked and I had a fraudulent activity. Well, first of all, my credit card company immediately let me know as soon as it happened, then followed the procedure of blocking my card, sending me a new one, and reversing the charges that just happened. I didn't even need to call them nor keep track of it, which isn't the case of debit cards. Okay, honestly, I still use my debit card for a number of reasons, and I still believe that cash is king. But there are just unexpected times that you don't have enough cash to pay for bills or other emergencies in life. I've had countless instances where I didn't have enough cash to cover for car breakdowns or an unexpected hospital bill. If I was only using my debit card at the time, I would not have been able to get out of tough situations. But the main reason I was able to utilize credit card and debt to my advantage was because I've learned to manage how to utilize debt. I understand this may not be the case for many people out there because debt can quickly get out of hand. But the main point is that the debit cards can help you in dire emergency situations. I have a couple of ways of managing debt which I can make a separate video on. There is currently about $800 billion in credit card debt so I understand that this is not beneficial to everyone. But hey, things happen in life like the pandemic for instance and if you lose your job you need a way to hopefully keep you off the streets. Another thing about debit cards are those pesky hidden fees. For credit cards, all you have to worry about is making sure you pay off your balance each month so you avoid the super high interest rate because that's how banks make money off of them. But for debit cards, there are all sort of hidden fees like overdraft fees, replacement fees, returned item fees, inactivity fees, and more. This is why I strictly use one debit card if I ever need to because I can avoid a lot of those hidden fees which I'll cover later in this video. Now, when I was doing e-commerce doing five figures of revenue per month, I solely used my credit card card for all the inventory purchases. And guess what? I was able to utilize my credit card reward miles to book 5 nights at a 5 star hotel for free. And the more business I did, I was able to accumulate more free money. Although misusage of credit cards will get you in debt, you can actually get free money if you have a proper management habit. Don't spend more than what you can afford. It's literally as simple as that. 
With debit cards, you'll be lucky if you can get any rewards at all. So for my Chase Freedom Unlimited card, I was able to get 1.5% back on all my inventory purchases. So with $20,000 of spending, I got $300 in miles combining my other Chase Reserve card. Those miles are now worth 1.5 times, effectively making it worth $450. Folks, even if you don't spend as much as $20,000, everyday spending on the things that you're already going to spend on adds up in free money. But as you know, with free money comes a caveat. High interest rates of up to nearly 30% a year if you miss a payment. But is it worth the risk of paying an interest for getting rewards? I definitely think so. If you're scared of missing a payment, then a simple auto pay option will take care of that. And if you're spending more than what you have and putting yourself in debt, then no offense, but you gotta get yourself a reality check. <laughs> it's funny because hearing all this about using a credit card from Dave Ramsey, he will certainly be saying I'm dumber than a rock. Explain to me how that's a wealth building method. That's dumber than a rock. The last reason people shouldn't be using debit card and use a credit card instead is because when you make payments on time, you're improving your credit score. Some people may argue that you don't need to use your credit score, but there are instances that cash can help cover for everything. If you're rich enough to cover for the purchase of a house, then good for you. But most people don't have a lot of cash laying around, so building credit is extremely important to show that you're credible and responsible. If you want to rent a house, you need a good credit. If you want to finance a car with low interest rate, you need a good credit. Finance a house with bad credit? Don't even think about it. I'm not saying that you should start using credit cards and put yourself in debt, but I recommend utilizing both to effectively manage your day-to-day -day finances. Here is how I go about doing that. What cars do I use? I hope you understand that the whole point of this video is not to avoid getting a debit card since you're going to get one if you open a bank account. But instead of actually using your debit card, here's what you should be doing. I have two checking accounts that I primarily use, Chase and Fidelity. Fidelity is my main account that I use for pretty much to store all my cash. That's because they offer a debit card that has an automatic reimbursement of all ATM fees including abroad, and they also offer above 2% interest rate on a checking account. As a comparison, a high yield savings account will offer you about 4% in interest. Fidelity also has no account fees or minimum balance required. The other reason I have a Chase checking account is due to the fact that Fidelity is actually a brokerage account offering these checking account services, so they don't really have a lot of branches and ATM available to deposit cash. That's when I utilize Chase to deposit cash and transfer over to my Fidelity account. But besides that, all my spending is done using my Chase trifecta. Real quick for those who are not familiar of the Chase trifecta system, it's utilizing three Chase credit cards to get the most reward points possible. If you're interested in learning the details, I suggest checking out the video where I go over everything you need to know. Now, if you want some more free money and still haven't gotten a chance to claim your free stocks, then check out the link below in the description to sign up for Moomoo or Weibo, deposit $100 or more, and receive your free stocks. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.